want to take you through a few attributes of God from A to Z. There are many ways you can do this, but this is just one of them. Well, Jesus said he was the Alpha. He was the beginning. Revelation 22, 13, Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He's bountiful. God is bountiful. Psalm 50, verse 10, For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns all things. He made them all. Essentially, Psalm 24, verse 1, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. All right, he seeks to bless his people. Ask, seek, and knock. Haggai 2, 8, we see, The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. In Acts 3, Peter and John, they say, Silver and gold have I none. <laughs> they keep going. It's a pretty sweet story in Acts 3. But whether we see gold or silver here or not, we'll see something even more amazing in the kingdom to come. Both New Jerusalem as well as our Savior, Yeshua, or Jesus Christ. He's the creator. He spoke everything into existence. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, Genesis 1.1. We also see from John 1 that Jesus was present and active at the creation, as well as in Genesis, we see the Spirit of God is hovering over the face of the waters. He's our deliverer. Deliverer. He rescues us and he saves us. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, after the Lord delivers his people from Egypt, he says, Blessed be the Lord who has delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of Pharaoh, and who has delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. He's everlasting. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Psalm 90, verse 2, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you have formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. He's our Father. He's our personal, relational, caring, involved Father. He cares for us. He gives the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him. He gives us good gifts. He cares for us. Luke eleven thirteen. If you then, being evil, speaking of us, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Gracious. God is gracious. He grants us blessings that we don't deserve or unmerited favor. Psalm 145, verse 8. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He's slow to anger and great in mercy. Or loving kindness, another way to say that. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So it's a gift from God. It's His grace. He's our healer. When the Lord made the bitter water at Marah sweet, he says in Exodus 15, 26, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. And the thing is, the Lord heals us in both the natural and the supernatural. Pretty incredible. But the Lord is just an absolutely amazing and logical creator. He's infinite. Psalm 147, verse 5, Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. Just think, the Lord's understanding is infinite. He created everything just by speaking it into existence. Pretty sweet. But he is not limited by time and space. We need to seek him. In all things, he is able to help. God is just. Isaiah 45, verse 21, Tell and bring forth your case. Yes, let them take counsel together. Who has declared this from ancient time? Who has told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no other God besides me, a just God and Savior. There is none besides me. Thankfully, God is also merciful. Our sins will be dealt with justly. Will you have to pay and experience God's wrath, or will you have Jesus Christ and accept that gift of forgiveness and experience his mercy? He is our king. Revelation 17, 14, talking about Jesus here. These will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. Revelation 19, 16. We see his name. And he has a name on his robe and on his thigh, a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Essentially his title. He is King of all. Not just King. He is a King of Kings, as well as he's the Lord and Master of all Masters. Pretty sweet. He's the Lion and the Lamb. Revelation 5, 5. And you can tie this to many verses here, but we see first Jesus is the Lion. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. Talking about Jesus, God the Son. John 1, 29, we see the Lamb. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Pretty cool. We see in Corinthians also that Jesus is our Lamb sacrifice, our Passover Lamb. He's the merciful Messiah. And I say, He's merciful. Micah 7, 18, and 19, it reads, Who is a God like you, 
pardoning iniquity and passing over the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in mercy. He will again have compassion on us and will subdue our iniquities. He will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. That's what God does through forgiveness. He casts our sins into the depths of the sea. Amazing, amazing forgiveness. Jesus was the Messiah. So he's our merciful Messiah. John, 20, uh, John 4, 25 through 26. The woman said to him, and this is speaking to the woman at the well, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. I'm telling her very directly, he is the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one of God to come to save the people from their sins, deliver us. He's nurturing. Psalm 82, verses 2 and 3. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Selah. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. We see God's heart totally for the people who are disadvantaged, and he wants those who, you know, who need help. He wants us to help them as well as he has that heart. So just a beautiful example of God nurturing us. He provides for our needs as well as loves us. He's omnipotent. Revelation 19, verse 6. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as the sound of mighty, un, mighty, mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. He's all-powerful. That's what it means. He's pure. He is holy. He's set apart. He's without flaw. He's pure. Who will stand in the hill of the Lord? And uh, Who is it? It's he who has pure hands and a clean heart. We see that from Psalm 24, verses 3 and 4. Revelation 4, 8, the four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Just a wonderful reminder that our God is holy and pure. Sometimes God is quiet. He often speaks to us, to our hearts, very quietly, as he did with Elijah in a still small voice. 1 Kings 19, 12, we see this. And after an earthquake of fire, but the Lord is not in the fire, and after the fire... A still small voice. We see God spoke to Elijah in a very still small voice, very comforting and very personal to us. Again, God our Father nurturing us. He's righteous. Eliphaz the Temanite, even though he was rebuked later for his uh, entire advice, this is true right here. Job 4.17. Can a mortal be more righteous than God? Can a man be more pure than his maker? The implicit answer there is no. God is righteous, meaning he does the right thing. <laughs> He, uh, he does not do evil. He does not do wickedness. He's God. He's wonderful. He's a Savior. God our Savior. And I, I go to Matthew one twenty one, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And the name Jesus, or Yeshua, literally means the Lord saves, the Lord delivers, or the Lord is salvation. That's a title over Jesus' life. That's the banner over his name. He came to deliver us from our sins. Jude one twenty four or Jude verses twenty four through twenty five since it is only one chapter, uh, verses twenty four and twenty five. Here it goes. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. God our Savior. We see also Mary rejoice in God her Savior. He's true. Jesus speaking to John in Revelation 22, verse 6, Then he said to me, These words are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. God is faithful. He will not let you down. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through him. He said that in John 14, 6. And he goes to prepare a place for us. Let's be ready. He's unchanging. Hebrews 7, 24. But he, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Talking about like Melchizedek, Jesus is a high priest forever, offering up a sacrifice for us, and he has done it. Amen. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Again, unchanging. What a comfort. You know, we don't have a God who's going to change the, change the game on us and change the standard. He remains the same and remains faithful. He's victorious. David states, 1 Chronicles 29, 11, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty, for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. God is wise. Psalm 136, verse 5 states that the Lord made the heavens by his wisdom. Proverbs 2, 6, for the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. We see if we pray for wisdom, James 1, 5, 
If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Pretty good news. We can ask wisdom from the wise God. Actual X word here, and I would say exalted because Jesus was exalted to the highest place. He humbled himself even to death on the cross, dying for our sins, and the Father exalted him. But Xerophilus, which means he, uh, he flourishes even in the driest of places. Even when we're the most thirsty, Jesus promises to be the living water. John 4, verses 13 through 14, Jesus answered and said to her, again, the woman at the well, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Just the refreshing. And the Holy Spirit refreshing us. Just the, the wonderful promise there. The Lord is Yahweh. Exodus 3.14, God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. He is the Lord. If you translate this as a causative or a hifil in the Hebrew, it translates out to I am he who causes to be. He's our creator. He has no beginning. He has no end. He is God. and There is none like him. He is our master who is faithful to his covenant with his people. And again, Yahweh, the, the name he gave to his covenant people. And uh, a lot of times you read in the Hebrew, Hebrew Bible, if they read it in the temple worship, they'll read Adonai, which means the master or Lord instead of that. So, yeah, very holy name. God is awesome. Zealous, he desires you to know him. The final letter, Z. Joel 2.18. Then the Lord will be zealous for his land and pity his people. 2 Peter 3.9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's great news for us. If you haven't repented yet, you have time. Today is the day of salvation, as Paul says. It's something you need to consider. You need to repent and turn from your sin. Zechariah 1.3, the Lord says, Return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you. James 4.8, if you draw near to God, he will draw near to you. And it's something where we have to respond, to come to him, and he will forgive us. He will heal our land. So we need to repent. Revelation 3.19, Jesus states right, very, very plainly right here, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. It's something where we need to relinquish all sin. We need to hate sin in our lives. We need to turn from it. We need to serve Jesus as our master. God has ordained that Jesus, the Son of God, is the Savior of the world. And you need to accept him today if you have not. So I would encourage you, take the time, repent of your sin. Ask God to forgive you. Believe in Jesus, put your faith in him, and enjoy a new life with him. And enjoy the God who has these attributes from A to Z, and many more. He loves you. Very important L1. <laughs> That's the whole root of him providing Jesus. So God bless you. He loves you. Follow him. <laughs> Peace.